Hello everybody, my name is Patrick Dennis with Eureka here and uh, today I want to take a little bit of time to show you an example of how Eureka can work alongside Salesforce Field Service uh, with the specific use case of property inspection. So think about any time that you have somebody who needs to go out into the field, um, visit a property, whether it be maybe a residential or commercial property, and they're going to walk through that location, they're going to answer some questions, maybe take some photos, be guided through a process or a procedure. And as they finish filling out that checklist, all the information is going to get uh, make its way back into Salesforce. For those of you who have no idea what Eureka is or what we do, uh, the simplest way to describe uh, what we're all about is that we are a Salesforce native forms application. So um, we are we have built and designed on Salesforce uh, with the sole purpose of allowing people uh, to capture complex information, whether that be uh, in the Salesforce desktop experience or more commonly. Uh, on the Eureka mobile application. We're built offline first, which means that uh, everything that you're about to see today works in an offline state. So if you have those folks who are going out in the field, they don't have access to the internet, uh, they're going to be able to do all the things that I'm about to show you. Fill out these checklists and forms uh, while they're doing their walkthroughs. Meanwhile, all the data eventually will make its way back into Salesforce. Everything you're seeing today is drag and drop, so there's no custom code involved. Um, Everything from building the forms themselves, which you see here in this little animation on the right, um, to actually filling out the forms. It's all drag and drop, click to configure kind of things. Um, so very simple for folks to set up, business users to be able to set up. You don't have to uh, have a uh, Salesforce development uh, background, if you will. Very, very simple, straightforward uh, way to put together these forms and administer them to end users. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about it in the context of field service. So we're going to have work orders and service appointments, and those are going to be dispatched out to our users in the field. And they're going to be using the Salesforce field service mobile application. And then when the time is right for them to actually do these checklists and fill out these forms, uh, we're going to send them over to Eureka to actually fill out all that information. So here's what we can expect. We're going to start in Salesforce. We're going to dispatch a service appointment out to one of our end users. They're going to navigate to the property using the Salesforce field service mobile application. And then when they get there, they're going to complete a, a series of forms uh, for their property inspection. And then they're going to submit all that information. It's going to come back into Salesforce, and, and we'll show you kind of what, what it looks like after that's all said and done. So with that said, let's go ahead and move over to my Salesforce environment. So from here, this is a screen that some of you are probably familiar with. Uh, what, we've, what we're looking at here is the dispatcher console. So uh, basically, we have the ability to take some of these appointments here and schedule them, add them to the console here, uh, and dispatch them out to our end users. And I just have a few uh, sample appointments uh, for the purpose of the demonstration today. We've got a group of folks out there that can inspect properties, uh, and we've assigned a service appointment to one of our inspectors in the field. And if we take a closer look at this work order service appointment, uh, what we see is just some basic information about the work order. Uh, we can see some information about the property that it's associated with. So it looks like it's a residential property. We can see some basic information there. And then underneath that, we also have some of the forms that we're going to be filling out when we're out on the field or out in the field. So you can see we've kind of broken down the property into different units, maybe one, one of the bedrooms, another bedroom, and, an, and another bedroom as well. We could do the same thing for the kitchen, for the living room, right? Just kind of breaking up the property into different units so that we can um, focus our, our forms and, and fill out our forms per room in this case. So um, that's kind of the lay of the land here. That's what, that's what we're shooting for. Um, these are the different objects that we're going to be mapping information to. But now if I take us over into the mobile, uh, the mobile applications that we're going to be using, let's pretend as though we're an end user at this point. So what I've got pulled up here is the Salesforce Field Service mobile app where I can see that appointment that I've been scheduled and dispatched for. So I've got this inspection that I need to go to at 2 o'clock. I can click right in here. It's going to show me where I'm going. And when I get there, this is when I need to actually fill out these forms. So what I'm going to do is actually open up this little action menu here. And you can see there's a lot of different things that we're capable of uh, extending to our users, whether it be little, little actions that they can take. The one that I want to focus on here is one called View Checklists. And when we click on View Checklists, what happens is it actually takes us to a spot where we can go ahead and check in when we arrive. 
And so when the user clicks check in, we're grabbing the latitude and longitude of that end user, the date and time that they've arrived, you know, um, all rich information that allows us to have a full audit trail of our end user while they're uh, on site. Now the next thing is we can see there's three forms here that I need to fill out when I'm on site. And you'll notice these are the same forms that were in that list earlier when we were looking at the work order. So we've got bedroom one, bedroom two, bedroom three. Again, it could be anything that we want it to be. It could be the, every room in the house, or it can be broken down into floors. So the first floor, second floor, that doesn't really matter. We could have it. We we could design it any way we wish. But in any case, let's just say that you know it's time for me to actually do an inspection of the first bedroom. I can click into the bedroom here. And what we'll notice is that here's my form that I can start to interact with. So uh, I'm going to draw your attention to a few things. Number one, at the top, we've got some pre-populated information. Don't overlook this. This is really significant. We can pull data in from records in Salesforce. So here we've got, for example, the work order subject is being pulled in. We also have the street address of the property, the property type, as well as this is you know bedroom number one. So this kind of stuff is pulling in from those records. And we can even update it if we want to. So, for example, if I wanted to change, if I wanted to change the subject of the work order to include the word demo, uh, I can go ahead and do that here. And Eureka is going to update that information back in Salesforce when we submit this form. So, uh, the data synchronization is a kind of a two-way street where we can pull data in and push data back out into the system. So now the next thing we might want to do is just um, go through some work order line items here. So let's pretend like I'm going to kind of do a little bit of quoting or, um, or an estimating of some things that I see on the property. So let's click Add here. And I'll notice in the first bedroom, maybe the carpets need cleaning. So I'll just say, you know, this is for carpets. I can click on this little product uh, question here. And this will pull up um, the ability for me to kind of pick from a series of products that I have in Salesforce. We'll notice that the price was actually pulled in there when I selected the product. This was blank originally, but now it says $100. So we're able to pull in the price. And from here, what we end up doing is we might say, you know, are there any noticeable damages? Um, in this case, I'll just say no. And we're going to just add one item there for cleaning the carpet. So we're going to say that's a subtotal of $100. OK, great. So there's my first line item. Let's do the second one. And let's say that um, you know something needs repairing. Um, so we'll say repairs. Maybe we'll, we see an appliance, for example. I know this is a bedroom, but um, the concept here would be maybe we want to repair an appliance in the house. And that's going to be $145. And let's say, you know, are there any noticeable damages? Well, in the case of um, someone saying yes, we'll capture some photos here. So I'll click on this little camera icon, and this will pull up the ability to capture an image of something that I see. So this is just a, an old, old refrigerator here. Uh, we'll capture the photo, and then we can even mark up that photo if we want to. So uh, we'll take as many images as we need. We can kind of say, look, here's all this rust or corrosion on it. Um, but we could take as many as we need to, right? So. If I just want to take one photo, I'm certainly welcome to do that. Or if I want to take 10 or 20, um, we have the ability to capture as many as we need. And then we'll say that, you know, we'll, I'm just going to type in the word two or the number two here so you can see that we're actually multiplying price and quantity to get a subtotal there of $290. Now I could keep going and going and adding as many items as I want to. Um, but the point here is that we're adding a list of things and then we can proceed on with the end of our inspection. So does the property have XYZ? If the answer is yes. Does the property have ABC? If the answer is yes. Here maybe I want to capture some notes. What you're seeing here is our conditional display logic. So we're showing and hiding information and questions based on answers to previous questions. Don't overlook this either. This is a significant um, value proposition that Eureka can offer. Is that It allows us, no matter if it's our first day on the job or if we've been doing this for 10 years, it guides us through a process. It shows us the way so that um, all of your workers in the field can have a standard experience and a streamlined experience of filling out these forms. So let's capture some notes about ABC. This is an example of how I could capture some information here on the form using my voice. All right. So it looks like we have our little dictating uh, issues as expected, I suppose, depending on um, how you're dictating. But you get the idea, right? We can kind of capture lots of quick information here. 
um, just by typing in certain things into our form. So let's finish this up. We got our inspection closed out. It looks like we had three line items. There was one carpet cleaning and there was two appliance repairs. That totals up to be three. And then that totals up, all of that rolls up into $390. We'll indicate the date and time that we're done with this form and then we'll get a quick signature from the property manager or, the, or whoever it is on site, maybe a tenant. And then we'll submit our form. And what's going on right now is if we're online, it's syncing all the data back up to Salesforce. If we're offline, it's just going to hold it right here on our mobile device so that we could continue on uh, with our day and maybe do the other forms that we need to fill out. So here we're taken back. We can see bedroom one is finished. We could jump right into bedroom two and finish that one as well. So it's that easy to be able to present users with the right number of forms uh, to capture all the different kinds of data that they need to while they're visiting a property. Now, let's just say that I'm finished with all of them. I'll click check out. And what's going to happen here is it just takes us right back into Salesforce field service so that I can maybe close out the work order and move on with my day. So that's how easy it is for folks to kind of jump, jump in between uh, the two apps and, and uh, be able to click through and get all the work done that they need to. Now, let's go ahead and refresh our page here back in Salesforce and take a look at what's happened. So We've got the work order itself has been updated. If you remember, we added the word demo there. That's Eureka updating the records that it's related to. So the work order has been updated. You can see the form itself has been submitted. You can see our work order line items for bedroom one are now added in here with the proper products and prices. Uh, we can see the check-in information. So what the date and time that we checked in, date and time that we checked out, it looks like it took this person about six minutes to do that first bedroom. Um, so there's a lot of really great information that Eureka is putting here in the system. And then, of course, for each form, look, you can see all this rich data. So you take a look at, you know, this first form. Well, here's everything that the end user saw when they were on site. So you can see every line item that they added, all the photos that they added into the system. It's all here for us to be able to examine. And then what's more is that you can even take a look at some of the insights that were uh, captured while we were on site. So maybe there's a fire hazard because of what we answered to a certain question. Looks like there's some property damages. Um, and we're even using some Einstein vision here to take a look at you know some of the photos. Maybe we're seeing that there's rust, for example, I think is what, what we set up there. So um, a lot of really great information here just based on the fact that our user filled out that form while they were in the field. And now we can go through, maybe jump through an approval process, maybe have some automation fire off. You know, lots of possibilities for us at this point moving forward. Now, the final thing I'm going to show you here is what does it look like to actually edit these forms? Well, the answer is it's pretty simple. So if we jump into our form template here, which is think about form templates as kind of like the types of forms that you're using as an organization, the whole thing's put together with drag and drop tools. So this is what we call our template builder, where users who need to update these forms might drag and drop information and questions onto the editor here. And from here, I can say something like, you know, was the resident home when you arrived for the inspection? And we could say maybe this is a yes, no question. You can see lots of different kinds of data types here that we support. And we can click Save, right? So everything that we've done here today is click to configure. It's pretty easy to set these forms up, get them dispatched out to your end users who are using Salesforce field service. And like I said, it all works online or offline. So if you're in a spot where folks don't have connectivity, uh, no sweat, you can still fill out all your forms, get all that data back into Salesforce. So with that said, I'm going to close this out for now. This has been property inspections using Salesforce field service and Eureka. Again, my name is Pat Dennis. Uh, with as a solution engineer here at Eureka. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We look forward to chatting with you about your business use case um, and your challenges that you're hoping to solve for. Hope hopefully Eureka is a part of that. Thanks.